It's the most successful film series in history, bigger than Harry Potter, bigger than James Bond, even bigger than Star Wars. Over the past 10 years and over 21 movies, the Marvel Cinematic Universe has earned over $10 billion worldwide. And with the 22nd film, the all-important Avengers Endgame, on the horizon, what better time to look back at our interviews with the actors that have embodied Earth's mightiest heroes, from Chris Evans' Captain America to Brie Larson's Captain Marvel and everyone in between, including Rocket Raccoon. This is Becoming the Avengers. So, let's kick things off with Captain America, what with him being the first Avenger and all. Played by the handsome, the charming, the wonderful Chris Evans. A man so polite, he refuses to let me be self-effacing. The swine. Language! Come on, swine's all right, isn't it? I'm often told by my friends that I look like the pre-serum version <laughs> of you. That's a bummer. With a beard. That's not true, though. Don't, don't, don't take that. Knock them out when they say that. <laughs> oh my god. This guy's still alive. Did yeah. that feel pre serum? <laughs> <laughs> That's gonna be my line. I like it. <laughs> what do you think is behind Cap's enduring appeal? Because he's been around for a long time. Yeah. You know, I think he has a kind of um, austerity and a kind of binary approach to the world that I think is something we all kind of aspire to in the sense that it's, he knows what's right, he knows what's wrong, and that's it, and he believes it. The Avengers were formed to make the world a safer place. I feel we've done that. It's a very clean approach, and I think he has this kind of intrinsic leadership quality that you, people are gravitate towards. It kind of breeds allegiance. Also, he looks great in Stars and And he and looks stripes. great in red, white, and blue. Come on, he looks great. What is it like acting wearing a chin strap? Because the other yeah. guys don't have that. No, yeah, it's a bummer. Please don't make me do this. It's not just the chin strap, it's that whole thing. The whole cowl, you know, that, that's, that's, the, that's the hardest thing. You know, your head's where you release most of your body heat and you put that thing on, it does not breathe. I'll just say that, it's not like some cotton material. It's, I don't even know what it is, leather, plastic, I don't know, it's, it's sweaty. Steve. It's, it's tricky. You know what's about to happen. Do you really want to punch your way out of this one? And it, t it, 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 you can't see your eyebrows. And I tell you what, you really need your eyebrows because you could be making this face. He's my friend. And you put the cat and you just look like you're doing this. You just look so neutral. You have to like kind of get angry with the actual shape of your eyeballs. I could do this all day. It's really challenging to express in that thing. Hey, want to have a rousing discussion about truth, honor, patriotism? God Let's jump from America and head to Asgard and talk to Chris Hemsworth and Tom Hiddleston, two gods amongst men who play everyone's favorite squabbling siblings, Thor and Loki. And yeah, just so happen to be Norse deities. But, you know, don't hold that against them. Great planning. How was I supposed to know? I can't see into the future, I'm not a witch. No? Well, why'd you dress like one? Hey. Ah. Ah, hang on. Before uh, we get on the the Bifrost and head to Asgard, I do just want to point something out. Speaking of sibling rivalry, we very nearly live in a world where another Hemsworth was swinging Mjolnir here. I'll let Chris explain. I moved over from Australia to LA and had a couple of jobs and then um, my first audition I blew it. My little brother got a call back and he got another one and then he got down to the last like four or five people and then he didn't get it and then I get another shot. And then someone said, we're giving up, we're just going to choose you. What did you do in that first audition that didn't work? I don't know, I thought I did it right. <laughs> I think I just you know, fumbled all my lines and 
didn't really have a decision on what this character was, and I hadn't read the comics and didn't really know. Kept referring to his sword, not his hammer, uh -huh. that sort of thing. And Ken Branagh was in the audition, wildly intimidated by him. <laughs> <laughs> when you did know the role was yours, how did you celebrate? I think I was in Vancouver shooting a movie, and my parents actually were there with me, and my mum read one of the tapes I had to send in. So she said, you're welcome. And we went out for dinner and had some beers and celebrated. It'd be awesome if they said, no, not that Hemsworth, we want your mum. Who's behind the camera? That voice, get her in there. How would you describe Thor's fighting style? Well, pretty Viking-esque and rough and dirty. And, you know, heavy. And you've got to do all of that stuff whilst in Thor's outfit. Yeah. How often do you accidentally fumble over your cape or break your hammer? A lot. <laughs> yeah, we've had a few hammers snap in half. I've tripped on the cape. People have stood on the cape and pulled me backwards. I've had it flip over and land on my face and been wrapped up in the thing. They're the most unpractical things in the world. I suggest if you're gonna be a superhero, do away with that silly item. As somebody very sensible once said, No capes! No capes. Surprise! Your character hit a spot with people that maybe you saw coming, but it just landed. No. He really grows on you, doesn't he? I've been to all sorts of corners of the world, and everyone knows who Loki is. That's, that's been an eye-opener. Say my name! I'm sort of found in the pocket of the planet that just yeah. is uninhabited, and somebody will pop up and say, hey, Mr. Loki. I'll be like, hello. And then, of course, there's Puny God, which must have followed you around yeah, yeah. for ages. Enough! You are all of you beneath me. I am a god, you dull creature. And I will not be bullied by that. I watched that. I watched the whole of Avengers again while we were making Thor Ragnarok. Because there were so many echoes of Hulk smashing. Yes! Bills! <laughs> I'm just a huge fan of sports. I thought the construction of Loki being Hulk smashed is just so well done. And I remember the experience of making it, which made me feel like an insane person. It was just because there was no Mark Ruffalo, it was just me jumping into <laughs> trenches in the set, asking Joss Whedon, is this really gonna work? <laughs> yes, it is. Jump into the, jump into the <laughs> trench, Tom. Okay, Joss. Was just directing you saying, could you let out a groan of resigned pain? I mean, yes, Loki lets out a, a squeal of resignation and despair. <laughs> Sorry, I made myself laugh. Yeah, it was just, I was at the end, it was the end of a long day of trench jumping. Puny God. Now, of course, two people have played Bruce Banner in the MCU. First up, there's Ed Norton, who I don't remember either. Oh, man. Then, there's the loveliest angry man in the business, Mark Ruffalo. His secret? He's always very nice. Now, if you're wondering why we haven't seen a standalone Hulk movie starring the Gruffalo, well, the answer is complicated. Hulk. <sighs> Smash. The Hulk standalone movie. It's probably just not going to happen. Mm -hmm. <laughs> But by this point, do you even want one? Yeah. No, are you kidding me? I get to have the best time. So Marvel brought me in and they said, if you had a standalone Hulk movie, what would it be? And I said, it'd be this and this and this, and then this happened, and it ended like that. And they said, how about we take that mm -hmm. and we stretch that over the next three movies as your character and Hulk character arc. And I said, that's great. <laughs> And that's what we've been doing. So I will get a standalone Hulk movie, and we will work around Universal, and we'll do it in three movies instead of one movie. So take that, Universal. Now what are you going to do? You could have had a piece of this, but no. We have a son. Now might be a really good time for you to get angry. That's my secret, Cat. 
I like the idea that you get a recut movie. I'm always angry. Just chopping out everyone else's scenes. And you could just cut all the other stuff out of it. And you get to see a Hulk standalone Hulk movie. You have no idea. It's amazing. Under your nose this whole time. <laughs> Under your nose. <laughs> They'll probably try to sue us now. When it comes to fighting evil beings, he is very powerful and useful. Yeah, Banner's powerful and useful too. Is he though? And what was it like seeing yourself for the first time Hulkified? It was pretty cool, man, I, I have to admit. I hadn't seen the movie and I was sitting there with my daughter who was six at the time. She was on the other end of the aisle with my wife. And she saw me turn to the Hulk, she ran all the way down the aisle jumped in my uh, arms like, no, Papa, no, don't hurt the nice lady. Wow, no, don't turn into the green man, please. <laughs> and I was like, wow, that's pretty powerful. And I had to convince her for weeks after that that I didn't actually turn into the Hulk. There are only two things that can calm down the Hulk. First, there's Marmite. Not really. The second is Black Widow, who backflipped her way into our hearts in the form of Scarlett Johansson in 2010 for Iron Man 2. Rule number one, never take your eye off your opponent. Oh my God! Since then, she's become a firm fan favorite, and I'm hearing rumors we very well may see a Black Widow standalone movie sooner rather than later. Okay, what have been your favorite <laughs> Black Widow moment so far? Um, all the time I get to spend with your character, which is basically zero. <laughs> Do we have any scenes together? We fought each other for a bit. Yeah. This is gonna end well. That was, mm. like, that was not that fun though. That, that was, that was yeah. too, I know. there was too much aggression there. And everybody was losing their minds on that tarmac. You're not gonna stop. You know I can't. I'm gonna regret this. Go. Oh. I, I don't think I we know. have that many scenes to. Oh no, we oh, yeah. 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 uh, mm. Hi, uh, is anyone home? This is Scott Lang. We met a few years ago at the airport in Germany. I got really big. Is this an old message? Ant Man, Ant Man. I know you know. I know you know that. It's the front door. That's me. Can you buzz me in? Must be fun promoting this movie, right? Yeah, yeah it's buzz. sort of. It's giving me a lot of like. Uh, I would say anxiety, panic. I have trauma from it. And sometimes the best that we can do is to start over. Um, yeah. We need to work through these issues after the movie comes. It's really out. hard. It's impossible. Is it, how tricky is it for you? Oh, this is, I mean, you have no idea how hard my life is. This is a nightmare. Mm. Hanging oh, out yeah. with you guys is awful. Yeah. But there's only, there's well, one. Well, I get that. Yeah, of course. Yeah. This is going to work, Steve. I know it is. Because I don't know what I'm going to do if it doesn't. Let's turn to Jeremy Renner's Hawkeye, the butt of all the archery jokes. He first cropped up in Thor, and he's turned up here and there. He sat at Infinity War. Um, he's currently AWOL. Hmm. He did offer up his house as an Airbnb to the Avengers in Age of Ultron, which means that I'm guessing the Hulk had to pay a massive cleaning surcharge. But otherwise, yeah, he's the Avenger that is very good at weapons that were most popular about a millennium ago. Great. We haven't met yet. I'm Clint. I don't care. How does it feel to be admittedly fake hitting? some of your closest work colleagues. Like, is, is, was there a surreal moment when you're like pretending to hit ScarJo? Uh, well, we we fought in, in, in the first Avengers mm -hmm. when I was, you know, kind of... thing, right? She she knocked me out proper. <gasps> and then, um, yeah, we go at it again in this one. I, uh, and uh, yeah, that's fine. We're still friends, right? Depends on how hard you hit me. Yeah. She's awesome. Yeah, that's fine. You sure he's gonna be okay? Pretending to need this guy really brings the team together. Everything else, I'm always at a distance anyway. Yeah, and I, uh, I, I remember I, I, I never get to do with much. You. I'm trying to get, a, get, I got with the funny. 
I've done the whole mind control thing. Not a fan. Otherwise, yes. I'm always at a distance. So I don't, me yeah. too. I'm the same. Like everything yeah. to me is like something that's just in my head that I'm hoping shows up later. Yeah. <laughs> it's built my whole my job in every right. fight sequence. You just pretend, and then they'll fix it in post. That's well, right. I, yeah, I hope. Yeah. Yeah. I think we lost the element of surprise. <laughs> Do people think, Jeremy, that you're actually amazing with arrows and bows? People ask if I am. Yeah. I, I, no, I have he no idea. Is a really it's, good it's not shot. like I walk around. With one. The streets of Hollywood with an arrow. Yeah. I'd probably get arrested. Oh, huh, weird. Can't yeah. believe you don't carry an assault weapon with you. That's interesting. <laughs> so, from one agent of S.H.I.E.L.D. to the head of S.H.I.E.L.D., from Hawkeye to Nick Fury, the man that brought the Avengers together. Sir, I'm going to have to ask you to exit the donut. As played by the legendary Samuel L. Jackson. The Ultimates comics uh, yeah. had Nick Fury kind of in your image. Well, Mark Miller, yeah. And then you kind of took on the role. Was How did that all happen? Well, I spent a lot of time in the comic book store anyway. So I see the see the comic book and I'm kind of like, I don't remember giving anybody permission to use my image in a comic book. So I called my agent and she's like, well, no, we haven't had that conversation. And I go, well, it's Marvel. So call somebody. So yeah. she called and they go, and while she's talking, I'm looking through the comic and I see where it says, if they do a movie of us, who would you want to play you? And Nick Fury goes, oh, Samuel L. Jackson. I go, oh, okay, that's interesting. So she calls him and Marvel says, well, we do plan on making these movies and we hope, you know, we can make a deal with Sam and he'll, you know, do this. Okay, awesome. Let's see what happens. <laughs> who the hell are you? Nick Fury, director of S.H.I.E.L.D. I'm here to talk to you about the Avenger Initiative. So, Sam, consequently, Sam. I'm the first guy to end up with like a nine-picture Marvel deal. Soldiers trust each other. That's what makes it an army. Not a bunch of guys running around shooting guns. Last time I trusted someone, I lost an eye. In The Winter Soldier, you finally get a proper action sequence. You're in that car, and you tear up that road. How much of that was you and how much fun was it to do? The action stuff had to be very, very specific. The things that I get to say in the car are kind of me as Nick Fury, you know, making sure that I get everything right and how it all happens. And, you know, I mean, Nick Fury doesn't really panic. You know, he just kind of watches the stuff happen. He knows how, how, how sturdy the car is, how sturdy the car isn't. Warning, window integrity compromised. Yes, Nick? So it's all a matter of combining those things the the calm the calculation of nick fury along with the people on the outside not understanding who it is they're messing with Hell you yeah. know yeah i don't have any superpowers but i'm nick fury yeah exactly yeah. and don't you forget it yeah right how about you wilson could use a man with your abilities i'm more of a soldier than a spy all right then Another member of the team that doesn't technically have superpowers is Anthony Mackie's The Falcon, a character that in the comics could speak to birds, but in the films, sensibly, has a set of metal wings that let him fly. Also, he looks really ripped. When you become The Falcon, I know there's one thing that is not so much fun when you become a superhero, and that's having to work out a lot. Yeah, yeah. On your left. Uh-huh, on my left. God. What is your go-to regime when you need to get into shape and become the Falcon? Don't say it. Don't you say it. Left. Come on. Uh, I try to do a thousand push-ups a day. Are you are you pulling my leg? Are you being no. serious? Every day. One thousand. Yeah. How many have you done so far? Today. Yep. Uh, well, I'm not shooting, so none. <laughs> <laughs> Can you move your seat up? No. In my, in my head, you're doing this with Chris Evans. You got out for a good reason. Dude, Captain America needs my help. There's no better reason to get back in. He's there in the room with you, but I guess you, you can't really kind of, you don't want to match him. Like he's 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 got to be like Captain America, right? Right, right. Like he's got to be ultra. But no, I I'm, I have to be, I feel I have to be in better shape than Chris because I have to do what he does, but I'm not a superhuman. I see what you're saying. See, I see. I see what you're saying. Don't look at me. I do what he does, just slower. Because of this uh, superhero effect, I've gone to Comic-Con, and Comic-Con in San Diego is like nowhere else on Earth, right? Right. 
What is your your ultimate memory of going to comic conventions? A uh, fat Iron Man. Wow, you met, Every, you met him. Everywhere you go, there's like a fat Iron Man. I'm like, that's the fattest six pack I've ever seen in my life. And he's chugging a Michelob Ultra, like just <laughs> nonstop. There's nothing like seeing Iron Man belly up to the bar with a uh, Guinness talking about how much he loves your movies. There's nothing like it. <laughs> On your left. The Winter Soldier gave us Anthony Mackie's Falcon but Avengers Age of Ultron gave us two brand new, amazing Marvel characters in the form of Elizabeth Olsen's Scarlet Witch Ultron. and everyone's favourite purple pal, unless you're really into Thanos, Paul Bettany's Vision. My Vision. They really didn't take everything from me. So when you were first cast as Jarvis? Yes. Jarvis, you up? Will you, sir, always? Was there ever any semblance of an idea that you might go on to play Vision? Nope. Zero plan. Zero plan. Why does your Vision sound like Jarvis? We reconfigured Jarvis's matrix to create something new. So when do they say, hang on, not just voicing it, we want you to... I can tell you exactly, and it's a rather good story. And it just happens to be the truth, which is... Uh, uh, you ready? Um, I had just... I had a meeting with a producer who will remain nameless, who told me that my career was over. And he said, you're done, you're done in this town. And I, I was like, you know what? And sort of had this big shouting match at him. And then I walked outside, my legs went, wet, my legs went, I was like, oh, maybe I'm done in the business. And I sat down on Sunset Boulevard on the sidewalk and my phone rang. And it was Joss Whedon, and he said, do you want to be the Vision in the Avengers? And I went, yes, I do. <laughs> and that was, that's, that's a true story. That's exactly what happened. That's one of the best phone calls I can imagine ever happening, let alone in that I moment. I really, really needed it right then. Yeah, it was a great phone call to get. Brilliant. Now, <laughs> are these movies the ones where you get the weirdest uh, director's notes, insofar as you don't know what you're fighting against or what you're talking against, and you're moving your hands around, and people say, Actually, we like what you're doing with moving your hands, but could you do it differently? It is always funny to watch a movie for the first time, one of these films, because I truly, I'm always shocked by like, oh damn, I didn't know they're gonna make my eyes red in that moment. That helped my performance. Thank you guys. And uh, I don't really know what I'm fighting and I don't really know what my powers are doing, but I really make believe in my head. I know exactly what's going on. So when it changes, it's really fun for me to watch. It's not like um, Laura Dern in that last Star Wars movie where when she's shooting a blaster, she actually said, pew, pew, pew. I went, pew, pew, as I, as I Awesome. Oh, that's an issue that I have sometimes. I'm, I go, I, I make sounds while I'm going, like just in order to like get the energy. We'll, we'll do that later. And so, yeah. then I, so then I have to remember to make my mouth still. And go, and go, mm. <laughs> it was definitely something I, I was really insecure about. firing a thing out of my yeah, and you're like, head. And, you're and I'm going like this, I'm, I'm on my knees and I'm firing this thing out of my head. I think and I know which scene you're talking about. So Joss came up to me and he said, uh, are, you, are you good with that? And I was like, Joss, I don't know, man. I'm on my yeah. knees shooting a beam out of my head. I got no idea. Can you tell me? Did it look cool? I, I, how did it feel? It felt pretty stupid. I, <laughs> <laughs> it feels pretty stupid. <laughs> yeah. Who the hell are you guys? Now it's time for the Guardians of the Galaxy. Led by Peter Quill, a.k.a. Star-Lord, played by... Who is it? Um, Chris Pratt. Zoe Saldana as Gamora. This feels like the hammer, like Thor's hammer. Dave Bautista as Drax the Destroyer. <laughs> you suck, dude. <laughs> Vin Diesel, almost unbelievably, as the vocabulistically limited, talking, walking tree, Groot. Does the Hulk have a problem with Groot? Not forgetting its newest member, Pom Clementiev, as the emotionally engaged Mantis. No! Look, I'll kill you if you tell anyone. But let's start with Bradley Cooper, who plays Rocket Raccoon. Except he's not really a raccoon, he just looks like one. Can we get claws? Can I just, I just think I need claws. The Guardians are weird. Hello, 
Did you fully realise what you were getting into? Because obviously you, Guardians of the Galaxy came out what in whatever the phase they call it, second phase or whatever it is. It was an established, successful franchise and then you joined and it just... I've had a lot of folks try to kill me over the years. I ain't about to be brought down by a tree and a talking raccoon. A tree and a raccoon. Like, is this gonna work? Yeah. I'm Groot. Yeah, you said that. It was really a challenge. As somebody that grew up as a thespian, the idea of playing a character this restricted was a challenge I was very excited about. I am Groot. Well, that's just as fascinating as the first 89 times you told me that. What is wrong with giving tree here? My father, who's a theater director, used to say there are no small roles, only small actors. Well, he don't know talking good like me and you. So his vocabulistics is limited to I and am and Groot. Exclusively in that order. You must have gone, this is a risk. I didn't think it was a risk because the script was so good and I really believed in Chris Pratt and James Gunn. Mm -hmm. But I really thought Chris Pratt, I had seen them. Um, he played me the opening when Chris Pratt is dancing, it's the credits. And I was like, this is magic. Once I knew what James's vision was, like I knew this was an opportunity for me to do something that, that maybe really only I could do, which is essentially just breathe my own spirit into a character and you know, in that way, I, I can't imagine a better job or team to be part of. What is the best movie memento you've ever kept in your career? Star Lord's jacket. You've got that. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. There's one thing I hate. It's a man without integrity. Peter Quill. People call me Star Lord. You have the bearing of a man of honor. Green is not a sexy color. Red is. Pink is. Green is just, it's always been a villain tone. Martians are green. And I was very concerned about Gamora being the main female in the movie, not looking appealing. And I thought, guys, we have to really find the right shade. We have to find the right tight costume, like just pad these up. <laughs> no! Oh, what the hell? I know who you just... are, Peter Quill. And I am not some starry-eyed wave here to succumb to your, your pelvic sorcery. Could you show me? Your best Drax laugh. <laughs> Could you explain to me the trick behind the Drax laugh? No, no, Drax! Wait a minute! Drax! The trick is, um, I'm not very big on projection, and the trick is James saying, Do it louder! <laughs> Control freak. I would have found it so difficult in that scene where your character reveals the emotions of Peter Quill. Yeah. You feel love. When Drax laughs, I'm in hysterics. Like, I can't handle it. Romantic, sexual love. No, no I don't. For her. No, that is not. When he goes, ha, 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 ha. Yeah, but you know, it was really hard for him because he had to do that for one day, one whole day. <laughs> Okay. So you know he had to to uh, to laugh his uh, lungs out. Can you say that? Sure. And just uh, so for him, you know, he had to drink a lot of like ginger tea after and some like honey to uh, soften the voice and the vocal cords. <laughs> I have never felt that shit. <laughs> and me too. I had to laugh a lot with him. You know, at the end it was just like. Just like <laughs> <laughs> I like that these are misfits and they are absolute renegades. It's very cool. It's And I don't even feel like it's just the Marvel Universe. I feel like it's a very uh, special and unique part of that universe. I am... They're misfits in there, but they're survivors, you know. All, everyone is on that team, that's what, that's what draws them together. They figure out how to do something right because they just cannot get themselves to turn a blind eye to the fact that if they collect the money of some sort, the universe will perish. So I think that they do have a backbone at, in the end. And I like that because it keeps it interesting. Oh, what the hell, I don't got that long a lifespan anyway. I love Rocket Raccoon and I love his, uh, Resourcefulness. I think he's just a survivor, man. Now I'm standing. Y'all happy? We're all standing up now. Bunch of jackasses standing in a circle. Now I love the footage of you recording your lines because you do exactly what I do, which is you got the imaginary gun in oh, your hand. Oh yeah. I live for the simple things. Like how much this is gonna hurt. 
<clears throat> were there moments going, oh, I'm, I'm doing this, aren't I? I'm actually... The most embarrassing was trying to figure out, like, because I was like, wait a second, he's small. <laughs> <laughs> So at first I was like, should I be on the floor? And am I, all, am I always looking up? But I can't really do the voice if I'm looking up all the time. <laughs> so there was a lot of like very awkward crew member moments where they're just sort of like, what is this guy doing? <laughs> I'm gonna kick you! I'm gonna kill you! I was like, can we just put the mic here and I'm, let me try to do this, you know? And it was like, no, 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 dude. Just, just stand up and do the thing. So you talk and this mic picks it up. That's all we need. <laughs> That's right. Take it easy. Take it easy, Brando. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like playing favorites, but my absolute favorites are Ant-Man and the Wasp. You can't see the Wasp. She's just very, very, very small. Neither Paul Rudd or Evangeline Lilly have aged since 1995, but amazingly, that isn't one of their superpowers. They're both so friendly and funny and awesome, I just, I don't even need to big them up, do I? What was it like wearing the suit for the first time? Very exciting because, you know, when, when my wife told me that she was pregnant, I was imagining like, oh my God, I'm gonna have a kid. And I always thought, oh, I'm gonna have a kid, I'm gonna have a kid. And then all of a sudden the kid was born. And I remember seeing the child for the first time and I thought, this is no longer an abstract thing. <laughs> there it is, there's the person. There's his arm. That's it, look at that, there's his his head. And when I got the role of Ant-Man, I knew, I was like, all right, I gotta start the training, I gotta start working out, I gotta start doing a parkour trick, I gotta do all this. And one of the last things as I went through several fittings and that was getting the suit. And when I put on the suit, I thought, this is no longer an abstract idea. Oh my God, this, look at that, that's the Ant-Man suit. This is a very long-winded <laughs> way of saying, it felt like uh, having a child. <laughs> awesome. If only Cap could see you now. I was finishing up um, promotion on The Hobbit. I got a call from my manager saying, uh, Marvel are interested in meeting you for this new franchise they want to start called Ant-Man. Scott, I need you to be the Ant-Man. Paul Rudd is gonna star in it. And I was like, okay, hold the phone. What did you just say? It's a superhero movie. Paul Rudd's gonna be the superhero? Yes, Paul Rudd's gonna be super excited. I'm almost in, just give me a minute. And so I took the weekend and I watched some Marvel movies, mm -hmm. which is something I'd never done before. Ah. So I didn't realize that they were reinventing the superhero film trope and that they were actually doing the most amazing superhero movies I'd ever seen. I then was as keen as anybody would be and everybody should be to uh, actually become an Avenger. I wanna be in that gang. I wanna be part of that group. Yeah. When you, I'm trying to think of the correct words for this, come at Paul Rudd, oh, you okay? Did I hurt you? crotch first, and take him down. Tell me that was you. It's probably my stunt double because she did it so much better than I did it, <laughs> but I did do that stunt. <laughs> And then I did trap Paul in my crotch for the close-up shot of his reaction to that. And um, there was an awkward shared moment while he was waiting patiently in my crotch for our director to call action, which for some reason would often take unusually long that day. Or maybe it was just that every second was an interminable hour when Paul's face was in my crotch. I'm not sure which. Time to slow down. Yeah, it was like meditation, really. <laughs> you taught me that kick, remember? Yeah, great form. Those were the days. Whatever happened to us? Not the time, Scott. It's an action figure. I don't collect action figures, yeah. but that's the first time I've gone, I want it. I don't have this action figure, but I have, s I, now, I zoomed in. You know oh, what? That's good. I know, I do. Like, I saw it and it did make me laugh. Did they say, yep, that's the shot. We that's nailed it. it. That's. <laughs> no. It's too good to replicate. Yeah. Now, do you think it looks like me? A bit. 
it's better that it looks like me a bit. Yes. It's it, if it looked r a lot like me, then it's then it's really that strange. But it, it, things are always better when they're just a little bit off, right? It looks like Paul Rudd's cousin. That's right, Saul Saul Rudd. Saul Rudd. Speaking of small people, Tom Holland's Spider-Man is one of the shortest, five foot eight, and youngest, 22 years old, non-raccoon-shaped life forms in the Avengers. As well as being your local, friendly neighborhood Spider-Man, our Tom Holland is also a walking, talking meme. Just ask him how to pronounce the word poisson. Did I get that right? Still not sure. I am a walking meme. I am, my fans love it. And it's fun, you know? The funniest one is I was on a diet when we did Heart of the Sea, right? And we were only allowed to eat 500 calories a day, which is awful. I stole a croissant from the catering thing that the crew ate, I ate it and then threw up immediately because I just wasn't used to the sugar because I've been on this diet for so long. But I said croissant. I don't know how, how would you say a croissant? I would say croissant. How would you say croissant? croissant. A croissant, right? And. My fans were like, Tom Holland can't say quack croissant, he says quaxon. Quaxon, 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 quaxon. And every fan I meet, they take a video, they're like, hey man, can you say quaxon? I'm like, quaxon. It's quite sweet though, I quite like it, but of, yeah. Of all the ones, setting off the quaxon, claxon. The quaxon, claxon, I like that. You got hard, kid. Where are you from? <laughs> Queens. <laughs> Brooklyn. Do you have fun? surprising people that you're British? I don't really think about it. There was a few people on Avengers where I was like, hi there, how are you doing? And they're like, where are you from? I'm like London. Uh, but I just, my dialect coach, Rick Lipton, is the man. <clears throat> What's up guys, you forget your pin number? Whoa, you're the Avengers. What are you guys doing here? <laughs> Thor, <laughs> Hulk, good to finally meet you guys. <laughs> Oh, you'd be more handsome in person. I mean, Avengers is on another level. Mm. I'm Peter, by the way. Doctor Strange. Oh, you're using your made-up names. Um, I'm Spider-Man, then. Some of the stuff that they get you to imagine, they're like, imagine this. And you're like, do you have a picture that you could show me? And they're like, no, it's a secret. And you're like, oh, okay, great. Imagine a gigantic tentacle monster covered in yeah. hair. You're like, well, you're fighting this person. Well, what does he look like? Well, we can't tell you because if we tell you, you'll know who it is. Yeah, but what does he sound like? Well, we can't tell you that because that would give away who he is. I'm like, yeah, but I'm trying to act with a tennis ball and I don't know what the person looks like. Let me get this straight. You're fighting and you don't know who the villain is. Yeah, there, there is one moment in Avengers where I don't know who that person is. That's amazing. And I'm fighting him and there's nothing more embarrassing than pretending to fight a monster in front of 200 people in spandex. You know, literally like dodging stuff and trying to web him. They're all like, yeah, that's great, Tom. More energy, more energy. Jump, jump. They're always asking me to jump. And yeah, it's funny because Robert's like, dude, by movie three, you're going to have your stunt double be doing that. And I'm like, nope, no, no, no. You're a kid. You're an Avenger now. The lead character of the ninth biggest film of all time, Black Panther, $1.3 billion at the World Wide Box Office, just saying, is played by one Mr. Chadwick Boseman, a man who is very grateful he doesn't have to wear the traditional comic book Black Panther cape. Now, when you put on the costume for the very first time, how did that feel to inhabit the role in that way? The suit, it gives you a sense of a knight. It gives you a sense of, at the same time, a samurai. It feels like a ninja. There's some stealth quality to it. There are different like designs within it that still feel like it, it is very African and from the continent. Your suit, it's vibranium? It, it feels like it's armor. The Black Panther has been the protector of Wakanda for generations. A mantle passed from warrior to warrior. All of that sort of starts to run through your mind and your imagination. You, you, you're a kid, essentially, when you're playing a superhero. You're doing what you what you always did when you were playing uh, in the backyard or at your friend's house. Who are you? 
And so I think you just have to sort of go into that childlike place and just do what you did when you were five years old. You know, that's, that's what this is. Must be so grateful that you don't have to wear the traditional cape. <laughs> well, the cape would be, would be very complicated <laughs> in terms of um, to deal with. It, it, would, it would be hard to deal with that and, yeah, and, and, and move around. Black Panther likes hanging off the back of cars, like a cat. And when you've got a cape going on, yeah, that's yeah, just not it would be work. difficult. Whew. Glad that's not there now. Wakanda forever! Do you have a particular bit of fan meme or a poster that has stood out to you that you love? Yeah, it was a drawing that um, a kid gave me at Comic Con. Um, he was wearing a Spider-Man outfit, but he, but he, but he drew Black Panther on a card and said, "You're my favorite superhero," and I, and I was like, "Okay, well, next year you have to come as Black Panther. Then you can't, you can't come as Spider-Man." <laughs> but, but his drawing, I keep it, I keep it in my office. From capes to cloaks, let's talk about Benedict Cumberbatch playing Doctor Strange, who wears arguably the most famous cloak in all of the Marvel Cinematic Universe. And there are quite a few. This one is so famous, people actually dress up as it. I'd like to give you an internet update of what the world yeah, is Yeah, tell thinking. me, because I, I sure as hell don't know. This is the most amazing uh, cosplay I've ever seen. I mean, if you're going to play a horse, you really want to be the front end, don't you? It's like there's no end of humiliation to being a cloak that's just... We really do that. <laughs> Bit of asymmetry and back again. Mm. But it's just the way that they're not quite in sync. They're not quite... He looks a little bit like me. It's a very good job. I'd agree with that. It's great. The cloak's trying to take over. He's like, remember, like, enough, enough. Uh, don't ruin my light. Uh, that's brilliant. There's a little picture meme, and it says that in just two years, Doctor Strange has done these amazing things in okay. just two years. He's bargained with Dormammu, he's trapped Loki for 30 minutes, had the best battle in the MCU, impersonated a Hindu god, saved Tony Stark's life, and watched Avengers 4 already by imagining it in his mind. <laughs> that's very good. Plus, he has the best cloak in the whole gang. I, I don't disagree. I'm the cat that got the cre I'm very lucky. Really? You want me to? Okay, I'll be the keeper of secrets, and <laughs> I know what's going to happen, and uh, fabulous. You want me to do that in this film? Do you want me to steal this scene and that scene? Yeah. <laughs> no, I'm just being a bit greedy now. Okay, I'll have the what they call the source of battle. Fine. In the ensemble films, you were expecting to take a very minor key, back foot, not character, front and centre kind of role. And it's about Tony Stark, it's about Iron Man. He is definitely central to it, as he should be. But I was amazed at how much I got asked to do. Why would you do that? We're in the end game now. The newest and arguably most powerful member of the Avengers is Captain Marvel herself, played by Brie Larson. What does it mean to you to play Captain Marvel? As in, this is a momentous thing, well, quite. What does it mean to you? What does it mean to me? Well, for me personally, it made me take a giant step outside of my comfort zone that I didn't know was so important for me to take. Mm -hmm. It was really personally life-changing for me to embody somebody who's so comfortable and confident with themselves. What is this? The SEAL logo. Does announcing your identity on clothing help with the covert part of your job? Said the space soldier who was wearing a rubber suit. And the strength aspect, like getting to do the fight training in particular and do martial arts, and now I feel like that's a huge part of my life. You have to let go of the past. I remember my past. It's causing you doubt, and doubt makes you vulnerable. That has like forever changed me. Yeah. And then I'm also on a toothbrush. <laughs> That's the ultimate life dream. I know. It's you know, weird. Uh, what are you gonna do? What do you do with that? Where do you file that in your head? <laughs> do you file it under toothbrush? Do you file it under surreal? You file it under don't want to think about that, worry about it? Uh -huh. 
even if there's a, a small chance that we can undo this, I mean, we owe it to everyone who's not in this room to try. If we do this, how do we know it's gonna end any differently than it did before? Because before you didn't have me. Hey, new girl, everybody in this room is about that superhero life. And if you don't mind my asking, where the hell have you been all this time? There are a lot of other planets in the universe. And unfortunately, they didn't have you guys. I'm imagining, you know, you get the role, you are announced as Captain Marvel. Was advice given to you from the other Avengers or other actors in the Marvel Cinematic Universe? Were they mm. saying, not to patronize you, I guess, but were they saying, well, this is what you need to be aware of? Mm, no, I mean, it's funny. I get asked that a lot when I'm doing press. People are like, who gave you advice? I'm like, we're not really like an advice industry. We don't like <laughs> sit around and be like, let me tell you something about this. Usually, I, like, we're playing boggle. We are not <laughs> talking about like, times in the industry and how we can help each other. It's Two years ago was a different time. Bother. Yeah, it's <laughs> not really like that. I did get to talk with some of them. We did like a Marvel 10 year anniversary photo and mm -hmm. I like tried to go around and be like, hi, I'm new, like what do you put in your smoothie? And <laughs> it just was embarrassing. Have you made your way into the Avengers uh, WhatsApp group yet? Have you hit those heights? There's an Avengers WhatsApp group? Lindsay, we gotta end this. I've got to we gotta end this. I'm too upset. Okay. Okay. I like this one. <laughs> well, there you have it. Almost all of the Avengers. And I do know what you're thinking. Haven't we missed someone? Genius, billionaire, playboy, philanthropist, interesting facial hair, talks to himself a lot. Gage heads up display. Check. The character that kickstarted the whole shebang back in 2008 with the original Iron Man, Anthony Edward Stark. Also known as Tony to you and me. And of course, his fellow Stark, Chris, from the Scott Mills Show, who spoke to Robert Downey Jr. back in 2013, before my time, for Iron Man 3. So I'll leave you with their conversation. And before I press play on this, I do just want to flag up that um, Chris Stark's interview style is maybe a little different to mine. Truth is, I am Iron Man. Robert Downey Jr., hello. Hey. Um, you have to excuse my nerves. I've only ever done this once before. You're doing great. And, uh, <laughs> really? Yeah, already. <laughs> okay. But yeah, last time I did it, I, I just got very nervous and, and uh, yeah, I, I, asked, I asked the uh, lady I was interviewing out for a Nando's. It was all a bit of a shambles, but, <laughs> um, but anyway, um, I saw Iron Man 3 and yes. really enjoyed it. Oh, good. I'm sure you get asked like a million times, but when you're in the suit, are you are you naked in the suit? It or really you... depends. Depends on the temperature outdoors. Yeah. It's snowing, right? Where are we, upstate? We are five miles outside of Rose Hill, Tennessee. Why? I heard your British accent uh, with, with Sherlock Holmes. Yeah. Why are you always so suspicious? Shall I answer chronologically or alphabetically? If I'm honest, uh, I actually thought you were British until oh. until I was until I saw Iron Man three and I did a bit. By the way, so did I. And um, you have to put yourself in the mindset. You have no idea what you're dealing with. Uh, Shakespeare in the Park. Doth mother know? You weareth her drapes. Because I was going to ask you, how do you do such a good American accent? But I know this is really stupid, but. Um, I couldn't be happier. I'm um, sorry, just to fi finish, um, when I, inter I interviewed Mila Kunis before, yes. and I kicked myself that I didn't have, um, she asked if I had a Watford shirt to give her, because my football team's Watford Football Club. Okay. And I, and weirdly, like we share the same last name, um, so I just was wondering Are you if you'd, uh, yeah, if you'd take this on behalf oh, of like, me and my Honestly. football club, and by the way, um, if you ever want to come to a Watford game, you're, you're more than welcome. And, uh, and, uh, Assigning me the number one means the world to me. Ah, uh, you're number one lad, aren't you? Thanks, dude. Uh, it's a pleasure to meet you. Please don't forget me if my luck changes. <laughs> I won't. All right. Thank you so much. Dude, where's Watford? What?
thank you so much for watching. Don't forget, you can watch more of these interviews here on YouTube whenever you like. You could watch this one or this one. And maybe when you're done with that, you can watch this one, then this one, then this one. But you can do whatever you want. Have a great rest of your day. You look lovely.